And we're very pleased you could join us this morning for a panel discussion of a new report that's just been published called Reducing Nuclear Threats and Preventing Nuclear Terrorism. Uh, this report was the product of a group of uh, experts and former senior officials uh, that convened under the leadership of Bob Einhorn and also Wendy Sherman to examine new nuclear threats, how the threat has changed, and develop the elements of a new U.S. strategy. This is really intended as sort of offering intellectual capital for uh, a new administration um, coming in. All of these, um, this changed nature of the threat really suggests the need for some fundamental rethinking of U.S. policy in the nuclear domain and potentially some pretty in, uh, important shifts in priorities. Now, I want to be fair and say that since the end of the Cold War, some good changes in policy have been made. But overall, in this report, the assessment was that in many cases, um, the changes haven't gone far enough. For example, in the degree of reductions in the U.S. and Russian nuclear arsenals, the degree to which we have um, not yet um, lowered the alert levels of the weapons that continue uh, to be in our arsenals. Um, in many cases, they haven't gone fast enough. I think we can point to both the Nunn-Luger program and the Global Threat Reduction Initiative. These are efforts to secure weapons and materials uh, in various parts of the world. And while they've proceeded at a sort of workmanlike pace, um, the fact that, um, you know, almost 20 years after the end of the Cold War, we still have large numbers of weapons and materials that are inadequately secure is not acceptable. And finally, some, in some cases, we've actually gone in the wrong direction, articulating a doctrine of preventative war, um, decreasing the U.S. support for various arms control measures and non the nonproliferation regime. Another top priority that's mentioned in the report uh, should be to mobilize uh, international, the international community to roll back the nuclear weapons program of North Korea uh, and head off an Iranian nuclear weapons capability. This is going to require uh, uh, sticks such as uh, financial and economic pressures, uh, but it's also going to require the carrot of normalized uh, and economically beneficial relations with the United States. Regime change can be a worthy objective, especially in the case of highly repressive regimes. Uh, but it's not a reliable method of achieving disarmament. And in any event, uh, it's best left uh, to the peoples of the country's concern. The report does make some, some comment about considering with our NATO allies trading the uh, extraordinarily small number of NATO nuclear weapons deployed in Europe uh, against a Russian pledge to reduce and consolidate their arsenal. I think that's a, a terrible mistake. One, because we've done this before. We eliminated uh, all land, ground-based uh, and, and sea-based NATO tactical nuclear weapons and exacted Russian pledges to do the same pledges on which the Russians have reneged. The Russian tactical nuclear weapons program proceeds according to its own twisted logic about the eastern border and their concerns there. Secondly, as, as the report indicates, our nuclear weapons serve, and I'll coin a phrase sit next to the man who coined counterproliferation, our nuclear weapons are an anti-proliferant. They do serve to convince allies not to build their own nuclear weapons. And precisely now, with the problems that, that exist right over the horizon uh, from Turkey in Iran, this would be the wrong time to talk about withdrawing this exceedingly small number of weapons, which pose no threat to Russia, but which do serve a major anti-proliferant role in, um, in, in NATO. You know, possession is not threat. Uh, you know, the French have, well, let me not pick the French. <laughs> The British have nuclear weapons, and uh, we, don't, we don't stay up at night worrying about how many they have or what they're thinking. So the weapons themselves don't create the threat, it's the confluence of the two. That said, you know, every nuclear weapon in anybody's hands potentially can get into the hands of someone who's, who's, who, who is threatening. And that's really where this report tries to turn the corner. In the past, we've always thought about nuclear weapons as being the possession of governments. After 9-11, you have to think again. And after AQ-Con, you have to think again. So 
any government, whatever their intentions, that creates plutonium or highly enriched uranium or can fabricate weapons is creating a lasting problem for humankind because as the wheel of history turns, somebody else can get them. We've already had one nuclear power collapse. That was the Soviet Union. What happens when Kim Jong-il goes away? What happens to those bombs he's got? Into whose hands are they going to going to fall. So it's not only about who has them now. And I think your uh, invitation to, uh, to today's meeting, build the report as a new strategy for reducing nuclear threats. And you might ask, what's, what's new and different about this uh, report? Uh, I would draw your attention to several aspects of the report. Per perhaps most fundamentally, uh, it's an effort to finally put uh, Cold War-style deterrence behind us and to shift our attention to today's most compelling nuclear threats. In particular, as uh, Michelle mentioned, we need to give priority to preventing nuclear terrorism and nuclear proliferation. Uh, and we believe we can give ourselves greater leverage to overcome these threats by reducing the salience of nuclear weapons in international affairs. This was a key point made by Kissinger, Nunn, uh, Perry, and Schultz in their January op-ed piece in the Wall Street Journal. And I'll quote from, from that op-ed. They said, US leadership will be required to take the world to the next stage, a solid consensus for reversing reliance on nuclear weapons globally as a vital contribution to preventing their proliferation to pr potentially dangerous hands. The report says that we can now achieve deterrence goals at significantly lower levels of nuclear forces and with, with less reliance on nuclear weapons and our national, in our national security strategy. Um, surprisingly, I think, that is precisely the philosophy and the policy of the Bush administration. This administration has done an abysmal job in portraying what is what it is doing with its nuclear weapons policy to the, to the nation and to the world. And um, that has been aided and abetted by extreme misstatements that, by officials that were left uncorrected. But if you look at what the United States government is doing, and a new team and a new administration will need to examine carefully and dispassionately what the Bush administration did, it has in fact reduced the role of nuclear weapons in our, in our national strategy and has moved to go with reductions that should go deeper. But it is, it is moving in precisely that direction. So the declaratory policy needs to be, needs to be um, brought into line with the operational policy. And as when it comes to putting pressure on North Korea or Iran, the amount of enthusiasm that others apply to helping us do that, you know, depends on whether they feel that, you know, we're doing our part. And, it is a collective uh, enterprise, and we have to be more attentive than we've been to making people feel that we're respectful uh, of the regime, because when then we come ask them to roll in on somebody who's misbehaving under the regime, we have to uh, have shown uh, respect for it ourselves. And I don't think anybody in the administration intended to show disrespect through the RRW, but this is just a case of a real uh, botch job of public presentation. As I said, that's another reason besides the technical reasons to start all over again. I hope that, uh, and I think it was the hope of everybody who participated in this report and or who signed on to it, that the report and this panel would um, help to uh, contribute to a, a dialogue on the future of U.S. nuclear policy that will be very important both to a new administration and to the Congress. Um, so I want to thank uh, Bob Einhorn, uh, Frank Miller, Ash Carter, and all of you for what has been a very interesting and provocative discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you.